What's going on guys? I've got a new video for you, hopefully, if all goes well. I want to talk about printing again in today's video because, well, in lockdown there's not a whole lot else to talk about. And as you guys know, I don't have a massive amount of experience printing, but I feel like over the past couple months I've learned a lot about printing. I've learned two really important things. First of all, it's not as overwhelming as it seems. And second of all, Paper's really important, so I want to focus on paper today. In fact, today's episode's all like paper like Dunder Mifflin. But before we get into talking paper, this episode is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Squarespace is an awesome place to host your photography business website. For example, you can create a members area for your audience, or you can sell your various photography related products like prints and calendars, and you can really easily integrate it all with accounting and e-commerce softwares. Best of all, the beautiful templates at Squarespace make it really easy to build your business website and make it look professional in the process without any serious tech chops. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. Okay, so on today's video, I'm printing a bunch of different papers, basically every paper I have. When I started printing, I had no idea the difference that different papers made. I literally went to my printer and I said, this is the image I, I want to print. What paper do you think it's going to look good on? They would tell me, I would trust them, and that was it. But after printing on a bunch of different papers, I feel like I have an understanding of what type of images look good on what type of papers and why. So uh, let's get into it. Let's go print. I think I have like six different rolls of paper. Okay, so I've printed on five different papers. I probably have like seven, but some of them are pretty similar. So I've done five, uh, but before I get into showing you the, the prints and kind of the differences between them, I wanna talk about some very basic things about paper and printing. The first thing is the weight of the paper. The higher the GSM number, the heavier the paper is. It doesn't necessarily mean it's thicker, although it usually does, it can be more dense and it can just be a heavier paper. So basic paper, this is like the paper you get at a, I don't know, like a, for your regular printing at home. This is like 80 GSM, I believe. Then if you move on to things that are a little bit flimsier paper, like movie posters, they're around 150 GSM. Magazine covers and flyers and stuff like that around 210. And then we're really starting to talk about photography paper at about 270, 280. Most of the really good photography paper is around 310. Then if we get to like 350 to 450, we're talking cardstock, things for business cards or postcards, stuff like that, really, really heavy paper. So yeah, this is like 80, this is 270. So this is where paper is starting to get, starting to get photo worthy, if you will. Now the next thing you need to think about when doing photography printing is the glossiness of the paper. And really it comes down to two things, either glossy or matte. Matte means it's kind of a flat finish. It doesn't have any shine, whereas glossy has the shine and I've got this harsh light on me so you can kind of see the shininess to it. It's almost reflective. In fact, let me point the light at me a little bit more so you can see even better. I'm sorry about the harshness, but I think it'll just make this less complicated. This is a, a basically a pretty glossy finish, a semi-gloss paper. And when you're talking about glossiness in paper, it ranges from ultra matte to ultra glossy. And a lot of people, when they start, they think the glossier the better because it looks shinier. And that's definitely something I thought as well, but I'm finding that there's kind of like a sweet spot right in the middle of it all. I printed uh, the same photo on five different types of paper. Probably put my Mickey Mouse gloves on. And they're not just different, like glossinesses and GSMs, different weights. They're different types of paper altogether. Let's start with a basic paper. This is actually called an ultra white. This is from Hanmule. In fact, mo most of my papers are from Hanmule. This is a matte fine art paper. And when I was looking for papers, I wasn't interested in this at all 
because I've never been a fan of matte. I've, m most of my images are really poppy. And so I thought that it would remove a lot of the pop to my images to put it on matte paper. And, and it does. Like a lot of the details look very flat. But at the same time, I'm almost wishing I would have used this paper upstairs in the studio instead of what I did use because it's not reflective at all. And I'll come back to this paper at the end just to show you the difference. But this is a matte, check my notes. Um, yeah, it's a matte smooth. So it doesn't have the usual roughness that a matte paper sometimes has. It's very smooth, it's very true to life. And honestly, I love it. Matte paper sometimes also has a bit of a yellow tinge to it, which is why they call this ultra white paper, I believe. And it really does look ultra white. Even in this bright light, it's really hard to tell that it's a little bit yellow. But overall, I love this paper and I'm gonna come back to it. When I started doing photography, I thought that the like classy thing for photos was canvas. And a lot of people start printing on canvas. It's a really interesting texture. It was the, the fad for a while. It's fairly cheap and it kind of looks cool. But in my opinion, it's not great for photography photography. It can be really good for things like art, for paintings, for decorations on your wall. For photos, it's way too matte for my liking and it's way too textured for my liking. So it just looks a little bit, it looks very dull compared to what it is. And of course it's printed on something that you could wear for pants. For example, with canvas, you can wrap it. So a lot of people will buy a frame and then you can take the canvas and wrap it around the end and then staple it on. It's very, um, I don't know the word, elastic. So you can spin it around, you can pull on it, you can't really rip it. It doesn't rip, it's a very durable fabric. So it, if you're trying to put some art somewhere that it needs to be a little bit more durable, canvas is a really cool thing to do. And I'm not knocking canvas at all. I actually have printed on canvas that Jody and I are gonna be using in our house as art. It just needs to be the right sort of thing. Uh, the third paper is an ultra glossy. This is Batra 350 GSM paper. It's very, very glossy uh, and it's a very heavy paper. I bought this paper because I wanted to um, print postcards on it. I thought it would look really nice on postcards. It's very, very bright. It's very, very punchy and it's heavy enough that it can support postcards. I think most postcards are printed at about 350 GSM. What I'm learning with printing is when you go really glossy like this, it looks like a photo. It almost looks more digital. It doesn't look as artistic. It doesn't look like it has the same depth. So I think this looks really, really nice. But in my opinion, printing on too glossy a paper almost cheapens it. It almost makes it look like more of a Polaroid rather than printed on photo paper. Let me hold up the matte paper next to this. This paper is so heavy that it just like rolls up. So I'm going to roll it the other direction just for a second. Okay, so this is the glossy paper next to the matte paper. Look at the reflectiveness of the glossy and you don't get that with the matte. So what, the problem I'm having up at the studio is the light comes in really harsh and my photos are printed on something I'm gonna show you in a bit, but it's a little bit glossy and because of it, you get this reflectiveness and you don't really see the photo. With the matte paper, no matter which way you shine it at that light, it still holds true. So I might start from scratch and print everything on this ultra white paper. Um, I'm gonna show you the satin paper I use after and we'll come back to both of these again. Uh, the latest trend in photography is metal. I'd never printed on metal until a couple weeks ago, as you guys know. And what I'm learning with metal is sometimes it looks incredible and sometimes it looks cheap and sometimes it just doesn't look right. I'm finding that when there's lots of white, it almost looks pearl rather than metal. And it is a cool effect, 
but I thought black and white images would look the best on metal. What I'm finding is images that have very little light to them at all look the best. I'm finding that images that have a lot of purples in them and a lot of blues really stand out and get that metal look. A lot of really grayish tones look pretty good as well. Uh, so an image like this really works on the metal because you have the purple in the sky and the textured blues in the water and the metal really holds texture really well. It gives really, really nice depth to the image. So metal's a cool thing, but I'm only going to be printing on metal for certain images. And those are images that don't have a whole lot of whites going on, maybe some astro stuff. You know, uh, a couple videos ago, or maybe last video, I posted a video with an astro photo I took on metal. It looks really, really pure on the metal. And in my opinion, that's the goal of printing, is to try to make the image look pure. Sometimes metal looks really unpure, and sometimes it looks really pure. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, there's certain papers, like the next one I'm going to show you, that kind of works on everything. Metal definitely doesn't work on everything. Definitely test on metal before you print a massive version of it. But yeah, this image kind of works. Again, that's glossy. Look at that reflection. Metal is ultra, ultra, ultra reflective. This metal paper is via the notes 310 GSM. When I got metal paper, metallic paper, I actually thought it was like almost metal. It's not, it's paper. And you guys are gonna kill me for doing this, but it's paper. It rips. Um, you know, it's not metal. It's like a metallic finish on the edge of the paper. Sorry about that. Um, finally, this is the, the paper I print on um, as um, it's been recommended to me by basically every printer I've ever used. And I absolutely love it. I think most photographers print on this as well. This is a satin paper. It's 310 GSM. I think all the papers I showed you are 100% cotton. This one is cotton as well. The reason I love the satin finish uh, paper is because yes, it's a glossy. You can see the reflection in the light back there. It is a glossy, but it doesn't have the cheapness to it that the glossy does. It looks very, very true and has so much depth to it. So you kind of get that like true finish of matte without it looking too flat and you get that punchy look of glossy without it being too glossy. So I think that if you're looking for a safe paper that you can use on anything, go for this, go for the satin. If you do a lot of nighttime stuff, go for a metallic. And if you do a lot of portraits, I think glossy looks really, really nice on portraits. Although so does matte. So um, this is a very, very safe paper, the satin. Um, 310 GSM. I'm going to show it to you next to, this is the glossy. You can see they're both glossy, but one's definitely more glossy than the other. I don't know if you can actually tell. Uh, in person, the one, this is the super glossy, this is the satin glossy. In person, this one looks like a Polaroid picture, whereas this looks like a piece of printed art. Um, next to the ultra white, this is the difference I'm talking about. When I hold both of these up, it, they don't look much different, in my opinion. In fact, the, the ultra white maybe even looks like it holds the color a little bit better, even if it's not as punchy. But up in the light, it doesn't reflect nearly as much. The paper I probably am gonna start using more often is this matte ultra white from Hand Mule. If I have a recommendation on today's video, when it comes to paper, is experiment. And one of the great ways to do it is most paper companies offer a photo pack, like a sample pack. All the papers here are hand mule. I do use non-hand mule papers every now and then. Hand mule has a, a sample pack and you can get a matte sample pack, you can get a glossy sample pack, and you can get a photo pack that's a little bit of everything, I believe. Those are really good options and they're not that expensive. It's about 30 euros to get a sample pack. You get two or three uh, sheets of everything. And that's my recommendation because everybody has different likes when it comes to how they want their photos to look. I want my images to feel real. I want them to feel pure. I want them to feel uh, like they have nice depth to them. And I want to keep that wow factor. So for me, I kind of need to 
harness both the matte and glossy. If you are looking to print something and you have no idea what you want to print and you don't want to waste time testing everything, go with something like the satin or the ultra white matte. That's, um, yeah, that's my opinion. I've listed all of the papers that I, I printed on in today's video in the description of this video. I'll be back at it again in a couple days. I'm going to finally have that review for you of the Nisi 15mm lens. I'll see you there. Peace.